it's too big of a mystery to figure out. The, the thing that's, that's hard to figure out is kind of like the Saturday Night, Saturday Night Live version of Bill Clinton when it says, uh, thou shalt not commit adultery, and he says, uh, that's the part I don't understand. That's kind of how your life is. That's at least how my life was, and, and that's how, what I observe with others, is that the part where you haven't repented, the part where you still enjoy Satan's things in the world, that's where you have a conflict, and that's where you don't like what the Word of God says. But what I'm learning from this now, and another good thing to realize about what the beast revelation is, is that I might consider it to be a warning, both to myself and to others who might see it. That might be what God's purpose is, is with this. The warning is that, look at what, what, who's behind the society of ours. Look who's behind the movies. Look who's behind the sports. Look who's behind the news and everything else that leads people and things that we follow and are part of in this life. The things that are acceptable, the ways that are acceptable, the ways of dressing, the ways of talking. It's all caused and run and maintained by Satan who essentially, as I said, is a man-eating beast. The Bible says that he is a beast and it says that he walks around looking for whom he might devour. And so the key word there is may because you see Satan can't touch people and souls who have made a choice for God. And this, this becomes clear. It seems like you know some sort of uh, pie in the sky uh, fairy tale but it's actually true. Uh, what happens is when you truly are on the path of salvation and you've accepted God's offer through Jesus Christ which is just as simple as like I said just getting on your knees and just saying to God God I know you're listening because you hear everyone and I want to accept your offer of eternal life through Jesus Christ and if you just do that simple prayer in, in your own way and don't have to worry about you know whether you're gonna say it right or whatever because there is no right answer you know the, the Bible teaches uh, Jesus taught the disciples something about the beginning of the prayer which is Father that thou art in heaven hallowed be thy name and the rest of that that beginning part but the rest of it is really up to your heart and how God will lead you so one of the things that we learn and that I have learned during this process is that the decision to go to heaven requires a complete decision to depart from the world and this is what's really confusing and one of the things that I think has confused a lot of people including myself is that we say to ourselves well you know how come we can't you know just enjoy life I mean God didn't put us here you know doesn't say that we have to be miserable all of our days but in a way it does kind of say that not directly but the problem is that as I consider the things that, that I like to do you know whatever it is um, and I you know have simple simple pleasures like anybody else or some people may have more complex pleasures but the bottom line to it is anything that that invites Satan in and anything that gives a place to Satan or Satan's things will pull your soul away from the path of salvation because the more that it the more that your food in a sense your your reason for living are Satan's things is the more that that you will your heart will begin to move there that's why it says your heart will be where your treasure is because where your treasure in this life is that's where your heart's going to be. So if it's for things that we know are from Satan, which by the way is, is any media that Satan will allow on TV or, or uh, you know, for sale or, uh, on any wide distribution or anything like that, um, even Christian stuff, okay, that's the really confusing part. But let's, let's just stick to the, the things you know, that, are, that are not that for now because then we ask ourselves, well, isn't there anything that we can do for joy that isn't just sitting there moping reading the Bible you know and just going Ugh, or, or whatever it is well look I'm not saying I have all the answers but if you really read especially Paul's writing what you understand is that 
we are dead and our life is hid in Christ. And he talks about our profession. Our profession is to bring people to the understanding of God and the fear of God and the repentance of the world in the faith that that thing that's, that, that's truly good, that, that life that's truly good is, it may even look like some of the things of this world, but they are not. And we, can, and we need to set them aside for now, especially if they draw us into things that we know are Satan's. One of the main themes that we read in the Bible is overcoming. It's he who overcomes the world. So one of the problems that people have is that while they believe in the Scripture, while they believe in the Word of God, they haven't quite overcome the world. And so in that, in that process, and I think it's a process and you, and you have to be patient, you know, and everybody's at their own level of overcoming. So, you know, you can scold somebody else and maybe they'll, they'll listen, but it said, the, the Scripture says, rebuke a wise man and he will become wiser. Don't bother re rebuking a, f a fool. But the reality is that overcoming is a personal journey. I mean, everybody must be ready in their own time. I mean, Paul was only ready until God actually came down and showed himself to him. And then he knew that he better repent from his vanity and from his, his scorning. Because that's probably largely what Saul, who became Paul, was doing in his life. And when, and when God came into his life at that moment and showed him, then he was able to repent and lead down the true godly path by which God was able to use him to write letters and to speak things which would be used in, in a very large portion of the Word of God that we need to look at as the roadmap of salvation. And this is something to be very proud of. I mean, you know, everybody looks up to Paul. You can imagine how great a man this is. And I truly consider myself a, a lesser person than him because I think that having seen what I've seen and experienced, he would have repented years before I did and or will because the bottom line to it is, as I said, I don't believe any man knows until God himself says to him, welcome my friend into the everlasting kingdom, you've earned it. So until that time we don't know and the bottom line to it is, I'll have no one to blame but myself if I don't make it. Now of course I've had a lot of people scolding me for doing this, uh, Christians, you know, saying this is a distraction, you know, this is a, you know, and also uh, promoting David Icke and so forth, who indeed is an antichrist, and I don't say listen to everything he says, but he has some of the best information on the serpents, or he did, before he got taken over, as I recall. But in any case, uh, you know, I get a lot of criticism for this, but I think that uh, a lot of people who would, would never even listen to a thing, you know, as soon as they hear anything Christian, oh, switch the channel. They don't want to hear anything. But they might, I think, you know, when they see the competence and also when they see the truth about, I mean, if you, looking at those little orbs uh, that were uh, by that helicopter in uh, the Dragons of Blade Runner movie that I uploaded, if you are looking at that and all together some of the other stuff that I've shown and don't realize that the LAPD and the law enforcement and government officials are indeed following me and harassing me just like I said they are, then you, you know it doesn't matter. You're, you're, you're not, never going to be in touch with reality. But I know that a lot of you watching do realize that there must be something going on. There is something paranormal going on and it is probably what I'm saying. And when you see the clarity with which I'm speaking and the logic and the fact that I'm uploading clear, believable, shape-shifting footage, which by the way is a lot of the stuff is on DVD that you can check out for yourself. But when you see that and then you see that I am saying that the Bible is true and that David Icke is wrong, dead wrong, when he says that the Bible is just a, a, a rehash, a fake rehash based on the Sumerian tablets and a bunch of other stuff, I'm saying that's wrong. The Bible is right and true and you can trust it. When you see that combined with the other stuff that I've shown you, that I'm not, you know, just a, a blind servant of Satan or a, you know, a, a dogmatic somebody who won't listen to alternate points of view, then you might consider that I also might have the right story about the Bible and that it's worth 
taking a careful read for yourself. Just if, if you just open up your mind and give it a chance and you'll, you'll begin to realize that the code in it is so, is so good and so complex that it really does defy human explanation. And so David Icke says, well, it's the Anunnaki, it's the reptilians. Well, I think if you, if you listen carefully to what it's saying, you'll clearly see it's not written by reptilians. Jesus is not a version of some other reptilian god that lived before or something like that, or some epic uh, god that they're trying to worship or uh, a symbol of the sun. There's no way. I mean, if you, if you just look at what it says carefully, you can see it's the real deal. And that's why there are witnesses. That's why Jesus performed miracles. I mean, do you really think all the Jews who wrote all this down were lying when they said that they saw the blind receive their sight, when they saw the dead raised? They saw these miracles, and there was, you know, the, the four main Gospels, uh, Mark, uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and many other witnesses. But those main ones telling essentially the same story gives, I think, quite a bit of credibility. And, you know, the fact that they can't find uh, any archaeological evidence or evidence in the Roman writings. What do you think Satan does here in the world? I mean, he's trying to trick as many people, and he's done a great job. He's completely tricked David Icke. I mean, David Icke has bought into all that stuff with the Sumerian tablets, even with Zechariah Sitchin, uh, with Arizona Wilder telling him right to his face that Zechariah Sitchin was a deceiver, and that was his job to deceive. He still writes a book saying that the Sumerian tablets, blah, 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 prove that Jesus never existed, which probably means that inwardly he knows. He knows that the Bible's true, and he's made his decision about it, and it's a really poor decision. Especially now you see he's got those uh, reptilian eyes, it probably means he's been taken over. So that's what will happen to you if you don't take God. And that's really, if you want to know what the whole thing about the Bible is, is about, it's, it's God, you know, God is saying it's me or it's bad news. Seems harsh, but that's kind, of, that's kind of how life is in general if you've ever lived it, you know, it's kind of one or the other. So God is essentially saying what life is, it's me or it's oh no. Long journey of recovery. We will all be with you as you learn to. tweets containing the words Obama and Satan. Yes, we can. Thank you, Satan. sticking out of it. It goes back and forth here and you'll see the horns underneath on the forehead are smaller. There's like three or four of them are smaller. And then the, like a larger set on the top. And that could just be only a, a partial, that probably is only a partial transformation. It's one frame and then in the next frame that's another one and then boom. And remember, this happens in a single frame change, so that's why you, no, no one notices it. But you see, this is not this is not a 3D special effect. There's no there's no flesh. I beheld Satan as lightning falling from the heavens. However, Jesus spoke these words originally in Aramaic, which is the most ancient form of Hebrew. Lighten or lightning or to cast forth. The word is barak. Bama is most commonly used to refer to a high sacred place as well as to the heights of the heavens or the clouds. The words of Jesus in Luke chapter 10 verse 18 as, And I saw Satan as Barak Obama. Did Jesus reveal to us the name of the Antichrist?